So as I was writing the script of another video I've been working on recently, I noticed something about the character of Kashiwagi. We don't really know much about him besides that he's a loyal member of the Kazuma family and a great sort of uncle figure for the character of Kiryu throughout Yakuza 0 through 3. So I kind of got to thinking, who really is this guy? Why doesn't he like the idea of being in higher positions, and why does he have such a strong loyalty complex for Kazuma and his kids? Well, I have a theory as to who Kashiwagi really is, and how he became the loyal second of command of the Kazuma family. And I feel the best way to begin this theory is acknowledging Kashiwagi's sole loyalty to the character of Nishikiyama in the first two titles. Notice when Kiryu gets locked up in Kiwami, Kashiwagi is the one to tell Nishiki the good news about having his own family. Kashiwagi gives Nishiki this information with no malice, and he seems genuinely proud of him, almost as though he himself insisted on the idea. Though Kazuma has some hidden intent behind this arrangement, but that's a story for another video. In Zero, when Kiryu was in trouble, Kashiwagi was the first person Nishiki went to for help. It's obvious they have a close relationship. Kashiwagi is even willing to die or lose an eye opposed to selling out Nishiki's location to Majima. Which might I add, what a fucking legend he is for that. Here's what I came to the conclusion of. As we all know, Sunflower Orphanage is the result of giving a home to the orphans Kazuma creates. We all know Kazuma killed those kids' parents. But what if it wasn't that simple? What if Kazuma recruited one of those victims instead of killing them? Kazuma has been known to do such behavior, as shown in Yakuza 2's plot. What if Kashiwagi is Nishiki's biological father, and he's been watching over his son in the shadows for years? I know how far-fetched this seems, but bear with me, I have some pretty solid evidence for this theory. In the Yakuza 1 prequel film, also I'd strongly recommend you guys watch the movie, it's very underrated and nobody in the Yakuza fandom ever seems to acknowledge it. Nishiki talks about how his parents died in a conversation with young Kiryu. <laughs> My parents filled the house up with gas. Nishiki's parents died by a house explosion. You see, a pretty solid way to fake someone's death would be in a case where the body is unidentifiable. This also makes sense as to why Kiryu never heard Kashiwagi survived in 3, because there's no official records of a Yakuza named Kashiwagi ever existing. He never would have been documented. Also notice, after the events of Kiwami and the death of Nishiki, Kashiwagi kind of deteriorates. He stops taking care of himself, he stops hiding his gray hairs. By Yakuza 3, he looks completely miserable. Could it be his reasoning for taking a liking to Ichiban and Yakuza Like a Dragon is because he reminds him of his deceased son? I'd like to hear what you guys think in the comments. Do you believe Kashiwagi faked his death and lived the rest of his life as Kazuma's second in command? Or do you believe otherwise? Let me know your thoughts. If you like these kind of videos, leave a like. Gives me an idea if you want me to make more like it. Anyway, that's about it for this video. See you guys in the next one. A side note I noticed while editing the video, have you noticed the Kashiwagi, like, he shows up on the keyboard in the song Judgment after that Nishiki has taken a liking to it? Like, he does not show up the first time you do it, but he shows up after. After you guys have performed it. After he knows that Nishiki enjoys the song, he, he joins in. Like, I know technically Kiryu's the one that was singing, but like, C come on, I mean, you, you gotta admit, it, 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 it makes a little bit of sense.